days by Lauren Becker. On his bad days, he warned me against having hope. He needed company in his desolation, and I walked down dangerous steps to meet him. He made me scones and coffee. He watched me eat and drink and brightened when I said the scones were good. I bought the raspberries at the farmer's market because I know you love them, he said. I thought to tell him I do not love raspberries but blueberries, but he did not attend to the things I loved. His bad days became mine. He no longer needed to warn. On his good days, he did not call. He found more good days. He found a girl and took her to the farmer's market, where she chose raspberries. He made scones for her and invited me over. She was tall with brown hair. Some thought her pretty, including her. She looked like me. He told me about her, and we both listened to the things she knew. She was a pediatric nurse. She grew up in Maryland. She used to dance ballet. They laughed about her ugly feet. I liked her. I felt lonely and went home. We met a while before at a cafe where he watched for the few minutes it took me to complete Thursday's New York Times crossword puzzle. I thought guys only spoke to girls in cafes when they were interested. I thought when he asked me to get together, it was a date. We didn't go on a date. He pegged me as a caretaker. I took care. I listened to him talk about girls. Sometimes he cried. He liked selfish ones. He introduced me to a few. They looked a little like me. I entered a crossword competition I learned about in a documentary. I practiced. I timed myself. I was close to the winning times from the year before. I didn't tell him. On a good day, I told him. He said he wondered why I hadn't been around as much. It was too close to turning into his story. I was on flat ground. I didn't want to descend. He said be prepared to lose. Waiting was unnecessary. Good or bad, they were his days. They had little to do with me when they didn't have to do with him. I thanked him for the caution. When we parted, my love for him halved. I stopped for ingredients. By the time I arrived home, it was halved again. I made blueberry scones. They were the best scones I ever had. The girl who looked like me, the ballerina, left him. He called me crying. I listened to voicemails while doing crosswords. I had two weeks. I did not have time to take care. I was lighter, safer. I got better, faster. I did not prepare to lose. I did not prepare to win. I did neither. After, he didn't ask how it went. I didn't offer. I told him I liked blueberry scones. He made me blueberry scones. I told him they were good. They were not as good as mine. Angel by Mary Miller Reggie stays up all night to watch me sleep. I know because I catch him, his eyes glowing in the dark. He watches me because I won't be around for long. He watches me because I'm the consistency of vapor. At the pool, he's wearing a baseball cap pulled low over wet eyes, drinking vodka from a Coke can so he can take it up to the architecture building later and get drunk while he works. Jesus, I love you, he says, lying on the concrete with his feet in the water. It's late. I want to go home and go to sleep, but I feel obligated to pretend I care because I've been sleeping with him, and in his world, girls are supposed to care about the men they let enter them. It's good to love Jesus, I say. She's such a bitch. He doesn't see me wave goodbye. I climb the stairs to my apartment, taking two at a time. On the balcony, I look down, and he's still lying there, churning the water. I smoke a cigarette, watch him through the bars. Then I go inside and sit on the stiff couch that came with the place. My roommate Annie says, You know, he was over here earlier. I fixed him a sandwich. Don't fix him any more sandwiches, I say. He was hungry. Everyone's hungry. We can't feed them all. I go to my room then and shut the door and lock it because my other roommate brings home strange men. The last one read my palm and told me I would die soon. I met Reggie at a party the first week of school. I was there with my roommate Hadley, the one who brings home strange men. She said, that guy is burning a hole in you. And it had been a long time since someone burned a hole in me. I went home with him that night. 
His bed was a mattress on the floor and there were clothes and towels everywhere. His sheets smelled like oranges. I held his penis in my hand like a thick rope of sausage. I don't think it'll fit anywhere, I said. That's okay, he said. He didn't say, let's try. He didn't say it will or explain that the vagina was designed to stretch to accommodate a baby's head. I woke up around four because I had to use the bathroom and he was propped up on one elbow looking at me with those huge purplish white love eyes. You're an angel, he said. I don't like that kind of talk. But you are, you should believe it. And every night we've spent together since has been the same. The nocturnal staring, the angel talk, me peeing and then having trouble going back to sleep because I can feel his eyes struggling to memorize my face before it's gone. Yeah.